Okay, let's talk toroids. So I've showed these uh, toroids that I made, and uh, they are donuts. Donuts, toroids. Um, and then you put wire around it. But uh, you want to put some wire around it. You count the number of turns, and you can count count the number of turns, how many, how many wires go th through the center. So one, two, three, four, five, so, um, how many can you fit? How, how many can you fit? Well, if you squish them together tightly, okay, there's some maximum number of wires that will fit inside the toroid. And it has to do with uh, the size of the toroid, and it has to do with the uh, diameter of the wire. And then, and then you can calculate it, or can you? So this video is about calculating how many turns will fit in your toroid, okay? Now you can measure the size of the toroid, and when you buy them, they're, they, you know what you're getting. But this toroid has a, uh, a 12 millimeter inner diameter and a 20 millimeter outer diameter. And then our wire has uh, some type of diameter, we'll call it a millimeter. And you, you can try to figure out uh, the, the geometry of this thing. Um, so let me show you a trick. And this is a trick that was taught to me by an old friend. And so here's a diagram. We have a toroid. And we have wires that are wrapped inside the toroid. So this is a kind of a thin toroid. But we're, we're, we're worried about how many of these wires will fit on the inside of the toroid. Well, we do know the the inside radius or inside diameter of the toroid. And so we can figure out the inside circumference. The circumference is 2 pi r. So if we know r, we know the circumference, 2 pi r. And if we know the diameter of a, of a wire, then we can count how many diameters go around the circumference. And that would be 2 pi r divided by d. And that would give you a number. But that would be the number if the wires were here. Okay. Does that make sense? But that's not where the wires are. The wires are here. So my friend told me, oh, well, you just calculate how many wires will fit here, and then you subtract three. And I looked at him and I said, three what? He goes, three. Three turns. I go, no, it, it, it depends on how big the wire is. No. Well, it depends on how big the toroid is. No. It's three. <laughs> I didn't believe him. Uh, well, I did believe him because he was like way smarter than I am. <laughs> it was like, oh, oh dear, three. So let's, let's calculate it, okay? So we know this is the number that will fit this way, okay? So there is some other circle here and some other, some other radius, okay? We'll call it little r, okay? So we have little r and we have big r, and little r is a little bit smaller, okay? So little r equals big r, minus half of a diameter of wire. Okay, see that? So this is, there's a half diameter of wire, and little r is big R minus half a diameter. All right, so we know the number of turns that uh, can go on a circumference, so we know this new circumference We'll call it uh, C prime. C prime equals 2 pi little r, OK? Which is also equal to 2 pi r minus 1 half d, because we just calculated that, which is equal to 2 pi r minus 2 pi 
over 2d, which is equal to 2 pi r minus pi d, okay? So, if we want to know the difference in the number of turns that go on the bigger radius, that is C, and the number, uh, that's the circumference uh, divided by D, that's the number of turns, circumference divided by D is the number of turns, and then the little one, if we want to know the difference between the two, then we have C prime divided by D, okay? This is the number of turns like this, and this is the number of turns like this, okay? So that's equal to 2 pi r divided by d minus 2 pi r minus pi d divided by d, okay? Okay? So that's also equal to off the page here. We'll go over here. This is also equal to 2 pi r over d minus 2 pi r over d minus plus the two negatives pi. You see that? 2 pi r over d minus 2 pi r over d, pi. So the number of turn differences between this case and this case is always pi and rounded to three. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what r is. It doesn't matter what d is. It doesn't matter anything. If you calculate it this way and you want to know it that way, you just say it's less than, it's three less. Three more can go in this way, three less can go that way. It's always three, <laughs> which is just nuts. Anyway, uh, so there's the proof. Let's do a fun one. This was a uh, interview question that a friend of mine used to use when he was interviewing, interviewing people for coming to work at our location. He said, let's, th let's say you have the earth, okay? You have the earth. Let's see, can I draw? Let's see, can I draw? Here's, uh, uh, here's, uh, anyway, here's earth, right? <laughs> and earth has a equator, okay? Here's the equator. Uh, it's Canada's up here somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> pull a cap. Um, so earth has an equator, okay? So he, his question is, let's take some string and let's wrap it around the earth. Now the earth is about what, 25, I think it's 20, it's, it's, uh, its circumference or its equator is around 25,000 miles. I think, I think that's right. Anyway, so you get a piece of string 25,000 miles long and you wrap it around the equator real tight. Okay, so now you have the string wrapped around the equator and you can measure the, measure the uh, circumference of the earth. All right, then he says, let's take that piece of string. Okay, so we have this piece of string and we're gonna cut it, okay? And we're gonna open it up and we're gonna add six feet. Okay, we're gonna add six feet of, of string, okay? And then we're gonna to try to measure how far above the earth. So here's the surface of the earth, and here's the string. The string used to be right there, and now the string is just a little tiny bit above the earth, right? Tiny, tiny bit above the earth, we're only adding six feet. So it's a tiny, tiny bit of, above the earth. What's the, what, how, what's that? And so he wanted the, the student to calculate that, how far above the earth is the string floating, right? Now my friend, <laughs> who showed me the uh, toroid question, <laughs> he, 
answer this one without even blinking. He looked at the guy straight in the face without picking up a pen. He just looked the guy straight in the face and he says, one. And my friend stopped and had to think what the real answer was and looked at him and he says, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so let's do the math. Okay, so we have the circumference and we have the radius. Okay, so we'll call that R. So we have 2 pi R equals C. Okay, and then we're going to use this. Okay, and we're going to say we have now have 2 pi little r equals c plus 6. We're adding 6 feet. Okay. So we have big R equals c over 2 pi. And we have little r equals c plus 6 over 2 pi. Okay. So r minus r is c over 2 pi minus c plus 6 over 2 pi, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi, c minus c plus 6, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi times 6, which is equal to 1. <laughs> Okay, so one foot, one foot. You add six feet of string and it hovers over the earth by a foot. Isn't that amazing? Just adding six feet, you go up one foot. It's amazing. Anyway, there we go. That's the math for the day. <laughs>